show for you tonight, all the way from the sunny shores of the California surf, Mr. Dick Dodd in the stand there. <laughs>
Texas. There was no explanation. They'd want to know who I was, and they and they wouldn't tell me who this D Dog was in Texas. Huh. So they wouldn't give me information because they really didn't know who I was. And they, you know, they said, well, I'm the real guy. And I wouldn't lie to you about it. Like that. And they're sending the money to somebody else. How did he get this stuff like that? Uh -huh. You know, Joe Ray, okay, that's when we started doing all the shit. That's when we called Dick. You can ask Dick. He said, well, see, he already knows me. But Ed was there, too. Ed I just met you. Ed should have run the fucking interview. He should have run the fucking interview. Huh? He was at KLBJ, the radio station. Yeah, he was at the radio station. They were interviewing him because he works for Guitar Player Magazine. And he knows me, so... Is that KLBJ FM? Yeah. So then he called me. This was the day before yesterday. Thursday morning, or what? <laughs> and uh, you made arrangements to fly out here. I made arrangements to fly out here, and I talked to uh, Howard Williams from the police department here. Which, he gave me a lot of help. We've been we've been on the phone for two days in a row, almost 24 hours a day, so trying to figure out where this guy came from and who he really is. Uh, you mentioned a minute ago that you uh, had suspected that someone was using your name and making money uh, using that name for some time now. Yeah, because we hadn't been getting any royalty checks either, <laughs> me or Larry Tamlin. And uh, we called up the uh, ASCAP and BMI, and they were going, well, there's a D-Dot in Texas. I said, well, I'd, you know, I live out in California, and, you know, I'd like my checks sent out here. And they said, well, no, the check's going to be down in Texas. You know, and we're, you know, right now we're trying to figure out who authorized him, how did he get authorized to, to receive the checks. And you think it's the same guy? Yeah. Why? Why? Why would he want to be Dick Dodd? I have no idea. Because the same guy was here in the Big Mama tonight. Yeah. The same guy yeah. 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 Yeah.
Meanwhile, out back of the Big Mamu nightclub, this is the man Austin police say was impersonating Dick Dodd. Officers say 36-year-old Jimmy Lee Dean is on parole for car theft in Houston. Moments ago, Dean was on stage telling the Austin crowd he was Dick Dodd. You're perpetrating fraud by telling people that you are the Mr. Dodd of the Standales. Police did not want news cameras inside during the bust, but Austin video producer Martin Theophilus was able to take these pictures. Officers waited until the alleged impersonator performed a song, then rushed on stage and handcuffed the band. The man who first pointed out the hoax was a writer for a national music magazine, a writer who had once met the real Dick Dodd. This writer saw the Dodd impersonator at a local radio station and called the real Dodd out in California. He said, I just met you. <laughs> I, said, I said, what? He goes, I just, they introduced me to Dick Dodd. And I had to call you. He said, there's some guy out here pretending he's you and the standouts. Dean and bass player Robert Devine were jailed on charges of attempted theft by fraud, a Class B misdemeanor. But police say Dean told witnesses he'd also been getting Dick Dodd's royalty checks. Dodd says he's missed two years of royalties worth more than $15,000. If police prove Dean received the money, he'll face a felony charge, punishable by up to 10 years in prison. After the arrest, Dick Dodd sang a few songs for fans who paid good money to see the real McCoy. Tom Harvey, News 36. Ladies and gentlemen, all the way from sunny Southern California, the real big dot and the closest goddamn thing to stand there required on this time notice.
white slave boys. I'd like to thank Austin for helping me do this thing tonight. Well, I love you, Austin. I really do. So, uh... Then we followed through. We got the phone call from the radio station. Everybody helped in Austin. Everybody helped. Uh -huh. The police helped. The club owner helped me. The radio station. Mm -hmm. The radio station helped me out and everything. So it was just great. Mm -hmm. Everything happened great. And you haven't seen any royalty checks in two years now. Yeah. Whoa. Can I ask one more time? Can you just repeat what you just told me about how, how long? How long have you heard about this? The people are imposter in, in person. A couple of years. Bells, a couple of years. A couple of years. And tell us once again for this guy and for our camera. How, how long? When did you find out about this? And how did you find out about? Okay, it? I find out from uh, KLBJ. KLBJ right. and Austin, and then they they phoned the owner, and the owner phoned me, and the radio station phoned me up, and. We all got together and we decided we'd uh, turn the tables on the guy. And you say this guy's been getting your checks for a couple of years? That's what we think. Yeah. That's what we think. His know. name is, is on, on there. Right. As far as Texas and right. all that's concerned. Do you have any estimate whatsoever on how much you've lost over the last couple of years? Uh, it's, it's been over 15000 now. Over 15000 Wow. <laughs> and what was the explanation for uh, you not getting? Your checks. They said they were there was no the explanation. They'd want to know who I was, and they and they wouldn't tell me who this D Dodd was in Texas. Huh. So they wouldn't give me information because they really didn't know who I was, and they, you know, and I'm just going, well, I'm the real guy, and you know, uh -huh. and you're sending the money to somebody else, you know, like uh -huh. how, how did he get permission to do that? Uh -huh. So that's what we're trying to figure out now. It's here for rock and roll justice, huh? Yeah. So, do we ever find out? Do we ever find out what, what's going to happen to the guy? Is he on? As I understand, it's uh, you know, it's just a class B misdemeanor. Hmm. So uh, I'm not. Really unless sure. it probably unless they find out he's got the guy's. Yeah, check. we should point out that uh, I don't think even at this point they, they, know, they that, know that Definitely. he's been getting royalty checks anyway. Like yeah. that. Basically, he had uh, one song, "Glory," you know, uh, yeah. being the standout. Innocent until proven sleazy, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, and also please welcome Ron Rogers from the White Slave Boys, who just happened to. Uh, how you? Be in on it too, Ron. How you doing? So how you got? Did you guys know about this before? See, they, your band opened the White Slave Boys, right? For the show, did you know ahead of time what was going on? Thursday night, uh, Steve Cheney and Joe Ray approached me and kind of laid out what was going on and asked me if if uh, our band would play the opening set, pull our stuff off stage, and uh, let the bust happen, and then get up and back up the real Dick Dodd, and of course I said yes. Let's see, what, what I thought, what I was wondering if you knew, because it was really strange, while you guys were playing, uh, there was a, a lag between songs, I don't mean that as a lag in, in boredom sense, I mean it was just the space in between songs, and one of these members of this fake band, who were, who were horrible, were yelling, were yelling things at you guys, like, too much time between records, and trying to give you their... Uh, Critique. Oh, is that who that was? That's who that was. That was the <laughs> figure. Yeah, that's the bass player. So I was, wondering, I was always wondering if you guys were in on the thing. Yeah, yeah, we knew about it. So you got a chance to rehearse with Big Dot a little bit before uh, not, none no. at all? No, I went over to his hotel room that afternoon and met him, and he gave, we just kind of, he gave me a song list, and he said, you know, pick out some songs you think we can pull off. And mm -hmm. So, I, you know, we picked out about ten songs, including three of the Standell songs, you know, that they were known for mm -hmm. and then I just got on, went home got on the phone I called everybody up and I said hey this is what we're doing they knew we were gonna do it I said here's the songs you know I just kinda sang the songs over the phone there's the chords and then we got up and played let's see some of that tape of uh, the uh, White Slave Boys along with the real Dick Dodd doing his real hits <laughs>
Todd, who was originally a Mouseketeer, wasn't he, Ed? Yeah, he was. And as a matter of fact, he still is a musician. Uh, he's got a group called the Dodd Squad in California. Yeah. And that uh, video, by the way, was shot by Phantom Productions. That wasn't done by our little hidden clandestine camera. Ron, you guys, you, that, now that's not your usual fare of music. You guys do a lot different type of music than what we heard there. That was uh, well, just a weird yeah. event. Yeah, I mean, I think our inf our music is heavily influenced by the 60s uh, and what like bands like the Standells mm -hmm. did. But uh, we're pretty, you know, we're kind of psychedelic. We're a little more psychedelic than that. Let me get a shot of this. This is y'all's recent single. Has this just come out? Yeah, it came out in July. I don't think you can read this, but this is My Ex is on X. <laughs> Which is a great song. You got. I, I really enjoyed that. So, did you write this song? Yeah, I wrote that song. Have you had this experience before? No, it's it's about some friends of mine though. That uh, all the, all the little references in there are true. Yeah. This is. Oh yeah, I might have made up one. Is this going to be on the? Names have been album? changed to protect the innocent. Uh, do what? Names have been changed to protect the innocent. Yeah, there aren't any names really. Uh, yeah, we're working on an album right now. We thought we might have it out before Christmas, but it's not going to happen. Uh, I had a, Can we find My Ex is on X in any record? Yes, uh, Waterloo, Record Exchange. Pick this up it's, if you get a chance, because it's really it's it's, cheap. It's not only a... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it, won't call, it won't set you back very much. That's right. Do you have a Cars cassette? Would you like to? Uh, sure. <laughs> so I make sure tape over or something. <laughs> so what's next for the White Slave Boys? You guys uh, working with... Uh, National Music Week, you, you're performing this week? We're playing Friday night at Steamboat with uh, Lefty, then we'll be playing uh, Water the Dog and Zulu Time. Okay, who are the, who are the other members of the band? You throw, throw uh, the yeah, together? well, John Keller plays bass, and Glover Gill plays keyboards. Sometimes um, that keyboard sounds an awful lot like a guitar. Well, that's his whole act, you know. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, his you know, he plays through a Marshall, you know, most he won't let sound men take him direct. You know, he wants to be... Mike and he's just a maniac, right. and uh, and Mike Smith plays drums, a great drummer, and uh, our psycho guitar player Fred Mitchum. So it's a you, know, you we're, we're we're kind of a mess, but it al it always works. I enjoy it. Will yeah. you guys come play here sometime? Sure, sure. Right. Uh, we would have done it today. It was a little short notice for everybody. That's all right. Thanks for coming by. You bet. And, and uh, glad Ed, being here. Ed Mayberry, thanks for stopping by. You bet. See you bright and early tomorrow yeah. morning. We're going to hear a little jazz music now. This is from Alex Cook and the Worthy Constituents. More Austin musicians live on Studio 5.